Oh my god, now I'm nervous. Is it recording? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Cannon. Cannon, sponsor us. All I'm saying is, your sales are gonna go up. Yes, L series. <laughs> Ready guys? Hey guys, I'm here with Katie Wood. She is a photographer in Arizona. We met, I think like, what was it? Like the middle of this spring semester, so like February, January, yeah. somewhere around there. We were Instagram DMing each other for like the longest time and then we finally met up and thought that it'd be a good idea to go through some photography questions that y'all have asked. So we put it on our story, got a bunch of questions, and we're just gonna go through them. Sounds good, right? <laughs> First question, favorite lenses. So we both have the same lens. We don't have the same body we used to, but we use the 24 to 70 Canon L-series. We swear by the L-series. <laughs> yes, L-series forever. We will not use anything else. We're both looking at the 50 or the 35 L series for our next one. This one's just a really good one to have because um, you get a little bit of everything. You don't really have to change out your lenses too often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're at a wedding, you can zoom in with it, but both of us kind of keep it on lock most of the time and just completely zoomed out. Um, but if you want to get those like really close shots of them like at the altar and you don't want to step in other people's faces, you can definitely zoom in and the quality is still amazing. Editing process and how to stay focused. Turn on like some show that I don't have to focus on and put it on in the background and then I'll just edit. Sometimes do that or music. Oh, I'll take breaks. So if I'm not feeling motivated, I'll like get up and go do something else and then I'll come back and I'll feel like refreshed. I'll also edit probably a whole gallery sometimes and then I'll go to sleep and then wake up the next morning and be like, I don't like this. It's a draft always. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you'll completely edit it and be like, no, I don't like this. And I'll just like go back and do all the tweaks that I want to. For me, I take it in like chunks. So um, if for the first part I was like by a tree or for example, um, I'll edit all the pictures that where I was like by that tree and then I'll delete the ones that I didn't like um, or didn't come out well, like they were blurry, your eyes closed or whatever, and then I'll have like that chunk completely done before I move on to the next one. Yeah, like almost like separating it, especially with weddings, you wanna do like the getting ready pictures, mm -hmm. get those done, you have like a whole, what is it, like block of the wedding done, and then you have reception, you know, like ceremony, all that stuff, so I kinda like split mm -hmm. it up exactly like that. And even with senior sessions, like do the same thing, like yeah. locations and stuff, I feel like it the makes lighting it easier. Will change. Yeah, exactly. Posing guides. <laughs> both of us were talking about this today. We both use Pinterest mm -hmm. um, for inspiration. So like I'll create a Pinterest board for my clients before their shoot and then we'll kind of go based on that for inspiration for posing as well. Mm -hmm. And with outfits too, like you can kind of find your outfits and then if you see a pose that they're doing in that outfit that you like, then recreate it. There's an app called Unscripted. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you want to get that one and kind of like look through, cause they have like, newborn, maternity, like family, senior sessions, wedding, like all of the poses that you could possibly think of. And you can even favorite them and like add them to your list of stuff, add it to a shoot that you wanna do. Um, I kind of started with Unscripted, so I would just have it open and like looking at my poses that I wanted to do, like for this exact session. Um, but Pinterest is really good too. It's kind of like the same kind of mm -hmm. deal. You're just putting all your poses in one. Or how to step up your photography game. Mm -hmm. I feel like using social media is a big thing. Um, also going out and shooting like when you feel creative or like inspired instead of just going to your shoots and like that's all you do. I guess this question could be taken like business side way. and then like mm -hmm. also skill side, but like Bailey was saying, I think finding something that's like gonna be different, that's gonna express your creativity in a different way and set you apart. Mm -hmm. Like Pinterest, um, I saw like all these gas station pictures and then I was like, yes. I asked my sister, like I was like, will you come model for me? And that type of stuff makes your stuff stand out so that it's not just like all desert mm -hmm. or all the same. Yeah, oh yeah, and like thinking of social media wise, if you have all of your sessions from like one spot, separate it on your feed mm -hmm. because if someone goes to your page and they're like oh she's lacking kind of um a range and stuff then they'll probably scroll away which is sad but just kind of like separate it from different shoots or like different locations because that's what i do in like 
you can't tell that I was, I have like literally all these shoots from one day or whatever. So I'll just like separate them between the months, I guess. What program do you use? I use Lightroom. Sure Lightroom. Use Lightroom. Lightroom. I know some photographers use Photoshop. But I am not good at Photoshop. No, I used to have it. Like, <laughs> I tried. I tried to figure it out and I was like, I'm gonna stick to Lightroom. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. Consistency in editing and how you do it. I think consistency is something that definitely sets uh, you apart. It's something that like, when your clients book with you, they know exactly what they're getting. You don't wanna have like some moody shoots and then some like super natural looking shoots and then some like bright and then some dark because then when your client books with you, they don't, they might be wanting like your dark shoot but then you give them your light shoot and it, mm -hmm. it doesn't, you end up with unhappy clients. So it's nice to just have a consistent style that represents you and your brand and then people can book based on their preferences of your style. Another thing like, if you're wondering how to stay consistent in editing, I will always like, edit a few from one session and then export it. Usually people have the like little preview app that you can like, what's the word? Plan out your feed in there. So I'll do that and I'll like stick a photo in there to make sure that it's consistent with all my other editing. And if it is, then great. If it's not, then I'll just go like tweak it a little bit. And that's how I can say, like that's how I stay consistent on my feed and with editing, like when I send them out and everything. How to use Lightroom and beginner tips. Presets? Yeah, presets, presets are really good. helpful. Um, like starting out with them and then kind of finding, like I think I bought maybe like five or six presets when I first started and just kind of found my own little, like what I liked. Using Lightroom, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> That'll take a second, um, but I watched YouTube videos whenever I was first starting, so that helped me a lot. It was kind of like trial and error for me. I would just upload stuff and then tweak it until I was like, oh, I like that and then I kind of figured out what settings I like to play around with most and stuff like that. Um, little tip though about Lightroom, something that you don't ever like click on, the optics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Life changing. Very. So always check the little, what is it? It's like, it's like chromatic aberration. Or, yeah, check that. Is and that how you say it? However aberration. You say that. <laughs> I'm sure. And then lens correction. Yes, lens correction. Yeah, if your lens is like giving you some big netting, that'll take it all out like because I used to, we both used to use the 50 and like 50 nifty $150 one and that would like change my life like it would take out all of the little like dark around the edges and it just makes a world of a difference if you don't know how to use Lightroom yet it takes a second but there are resources so like YouTube um, Cassidy Lynn has a series on her photography page Instagram and she has like a 30 day getting to know Lightroom series on there that you can go watch. And she's very in depth with it, so it's good. How'd you get your business up and going and get the steady clientele? What are your tips and tricks? I think we kind of have like the same probably story on this, mm -hmm. but it all just started with like me having a passion for taking pictures of my friends. I would just take their pictures and then people would ask me to take their pictures and then it kind of just started like that and I think for both of us um, we've agreed that like how we kind of got started is you have to take pictures for free a lot mm -hmm. and you have to build your portfolio because then that like will start to show clients your style and you can't convince someone that you're a good fit for them if you have nothing to show mm -hmm. for it so I think like doing a lot of portfolio building is yeah I was like literally eat, sleeping and breathing, taking pictures when I first started, which is like, it was a lot of work and I was very tired, but it, I mean, it helps you out in the long run. Like I started out with just my sisters and I actually like never picked up a camera until April, 2020. So like quarantine started and I was like, I'm bored. And my sister, my younger sister in high school was like, let's go do a TikTok challenge. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I was gonna use this camera, this vlog camera. And we like started out there and I was like, I think I have like a bigger camera, my Nikon <laughs> G3500. And I like brought it out we did the mirror challenge and it went viral on TikTok. And that's literally how I started. I was like, I guess I'm good at this because like people are liking it. <laughs> so, and then I started doing like more photography challenges on there and they like were still blowing up and I was like, okay, cool. Like, I guess I'll just do this. And I was still in college and I had no idea what I wanted to do when I was graduating like six months later. 
So perfect timing. <laughs> Glad it came in my life because now it's full time. And I mean, I guess I like give it all to TikTok. <laughs> TikTok and my <laughs> sister, that's how it happened. Um, but yeah, she's in high school. So like whenever I would start posting, I would get her high school friends, like everybody at her high school. Um, I started out in cheer photography, which is kind of strange to think about. So I got all the cheer, gym people and all that stuff. And then it just kind of like went up from there. People started following me from like high school and cheer and all that stuff. And then that's kind of how you have to start. You have to do like all your free shoots, get your name out there. It's all word of mouth at the beginning. Um, remembering shots you need at a wedding. For me, if I'm like shooting and I'm at the wedding, I'll like think about if I were the bride, like would I want pictures of that or would I want pictures of this? Also, I'll think about like, when I'm done editing this gallery and I'm like posting it on Instagram, what are the pictures that I'm gonna want in that little carousel that I'll put together? And that's how I remember them. It's also totally okay to communicate with the bride and the groom uh, before the wedding and ask them, you know, like for a list of shots that must have shots mm -hmm. from them. Um, because sometimes they have something in their mind um, that they really want and so, Having that list with you on the day of, like knowing, okay, yeah, they, they definitely want this um, is really helpful. Yeah. And you can ask them day of, like they're usually very chill. And if you're shooting their wedding, you're probably like already pretty close with them. Like you text back and forth and you call back and forth and all that stuff. So day of wedding, like literally go up to them and be like, do you want to go in over here and like take some pictures? Cause they'll totally be game for it. They want the pictures. Don't be afraid to ask tips for staying motivated slash <clears throat> on top of editing, AKA not delivering sessions late. I've delivered sessions late sometimes, but that was in the beginning. And you kind of like have to set a date for yourself. So like I'll tell them straight up like, oh, it'll be a week to a week and a half. And in, in busy seasons, it'll be like a week and a half to two weeks ish because you get like backed up during those and you're doing like multiple shoots a day, like especially for senior season, like mm -hmm. that is, those are a lot of shoots. So you're just like, just be honest with them, let them know like how long it's gonna be. Um, I would say for grad shoots, two weeks max, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, maybe around like a week, a week and a half to there, but like set your date and then send them what date they should be looking out for so that you have a deadline almost. And I would say, from like a client perspective, like do, try like really hard not to be late on that because they're really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And it's just gonna kind of make it look like you don't have urgency for their session, even though that's not true. They're, that's what maybe like they're thinking of. So yeah. just like really buckle down and get that deadline if mm -hmm. you can. Yeah. And if you're gonna be late, communicate that to yeah. them. They're not looking at all day. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And if they text you and be like, hey, where are my pictures? And it's been like a week and a half, like where you told them, then like you should have communicated maybe like a couple days earlier and be like, hey, it's gonna be a little bit late. So they're not thinking like, oh, she's gonna rush these now. Okay, ooh, how to pose difficult clients who won't relax and just move around. <laughs> I think like the easiest thing to do, okay, well I have two easiest things. Mm -hmm. One is the Pinterest board because if they, can, if they see somebody else doing it, um, or if you can just show them exactly what you want, then they're gonna be more likely to go for it because they just might not feel comfortable in front of a camera and they don't wanna look stupid and that's their biggest thing. And so if you kinda show them exactly what you want, they'll usually be willing to copy it. Um, or you can give them more like prompts. So I love doing like walking poses and I just say, you know, walk really slow. I explain the entire process, like cross over your feet, what to do with your hands. And then that way it looks like a little bit more movement and candids rather than just like stuck poses and then eventually they'll loosen up definitely they will like in the beginning they'll be a little stiff and you just kind of like have to work with them let them know that like it's okay it's just you and them so like get them comfortable they'll be fine in like 15 minutes and they'll kind of like loosen up you'll see it um but that's also kind of like on the photographer to be adaptive to who they're taking pictures of so like if they are a little stiff kind of give them more poses to where they don't have to like 
put that much movement into so they'll feel more comfortable because you can kind of like pick up on if someone wants to do like mm -hmm. a really out there pose or if they don't want to. Yeah, not everybody wants to. This way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like if they put their hands up and you're like, I can tell you're uncomfortable, it's going to show in your photo. So give them another pose, try another one. There's I also ways that you can like make somebody who's stiff look not stiff. Mm -hmm. So like if they're posing and they're like this, you can tell them like pinch your shoulders back and then you can tell them like tilt your head back and then you can kind of make them look like they're not yes. stiff yeah. by telling them exactly what to do. Yes, like head to toe. Not literally. everyone knows how to just like pop it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like if they're not used to taking pictures, then you're gonna have to pose them literally from head to toe. So like tilt your head, bring your shoulders back, pop your booty out. Like if it's a girl, be like, hey, pop it out. Show what your mom gave you, you know? Like <laughs> move your hands, give them somewhere like to get like, put them in their hair, something like that, just to give your, I always say like, oh, put your hand in your pocket or like bring it out right here, just to give them something to do. So it's not like they're just down here. Mm -hmm. And cause no one looks like that when they're just standing there, you know, like they're doing something with their hands. Usually most of the time, sometimes I stand there and like this. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the day. Location tips, that's a good one. Yeah, whenever I came to Arizona, I was literally doing just desert. So <laughs> I think the biggest thing is like, take a day and literally drive around and find spots on the side of the road or like something like that, like different buildings. Like right now I'm really into buildings. So just driving around and like finding the ones and pulling over and like taking a picture, send it to your client, be like, hey, do you like this? And then that's where you meet them the next time. I think like two big things for me finding locations is um, like what the lighting looks like there because lighting's really big you can pretty much make like anything look good as long as the, the lighting's mm -hmm. hitting it right yep. um and then paying attention to like what time of day that lighting looks like that and then also like i go for a very like clean look um so i love solid colors not too much going on in the background um not somewhere where there's gonna be a bunch of people or cars in the back because that's like such a pet peeve of mine and I will edit it out. So like to sit there for hours and edit out every person in cars is a lot. So I try yeah. to find something that's gonna be clean background, not too busy, um, solid colors. I love buildings too. Yeah, yeah. Architecture, like oh my gosh. Yeah, but I'm like, like very into it yes. right now. I like the like more clean looking architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like solid colors yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah, definitely the lighting. Like if you can find a cool building that has one side of it that has like the shade, but it's still like light is coming in from the side, then that is perfect. Tips for shooting in different lighting. I always try to find the shade wherever I am. Um, if I can't find shade, like in Arizona, there's literally desert. So people want like desert photos and there's no shade out there. So just go out there. Um, I always try to like position my client to where their feet, like they're facing their shadow. Mm -hmm. So just keep them that way because if you have the sun directly on them, that's like a whole different thing. You can do like direct sun pictures, um, but for the ones that you don't want direct sun, keep their feet pointed towards their shadow. Mm -hmm. And also, if you don't want a lens flare in there, don't get the sun in your camera. Like if you're looking in your viewfinder and you see the sun like in the corner, just turn the camera a little bit and don't get it in there. Um, but that's also like an artistic thing. Like if you want the lens flare in there, kind of like position it to where it's not hitting their face, if that makes any sense. Like the lens flare is gonna come through on your viewfinder and it's like over their face. Cause then you're gonna have to go in and like dehaze and all that stuff. And that's just a pain. What about Different lighting. Perfect, amazing. What cameras do y'all use? I use a 60 Mark II. Mm -hmm. I use the Canon R6. How to pose bride and bride and groom. This goes more with like the posing guys and posing clientele. Use Pinterest, um, unscripted. You can watch YouTube videos too. Honestly, sometimes I'll go on Instagram and I'll just scroll because I follow a lot of photographers and, and I'll just like save. <laughs> yeah, save their stuff. I mean, people use like other creatives for inspiration all the time. Oh, this one. I notice you shoot in the middle of the day a lot. How do you avoid a chromatic aberration? I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. I'm like really butchering it right now. I'm just like, aberration. Um, <laughs> how else did you say that? No, a it's aberration. No, it's aberration. I think finding shade mm -hmm. is always helpful, but if you're gonna shoot, like I've had a wedding where their first look was in the middle of the day, like right with no, with no shade. <laughs> and so like, Really, like she was saying about the shadow, finding, that's like the next best thing to shade is like mm -hmm. finding the shadow and having their free point yes. into their shadow. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want half of their face like harsh sun and then half of it like shadowed no. by their own face. Or like, also, 
I do shoot in the middle of the day, but I steer clear of when the sun is directly above them because that brings shadows right here. And there, I mean, you can go in and edit that and bring up like, use the brush tool and kind of like bring it up, but it is time consuming. And yeah. if you can avoid it, then that's what I would say to do. Also invest in a good lens because if you want to shoot in, um, like direct sun and all that stuff, it's gonna be harder to get rid of it if you're using like one of the beginner lenses. Mm -hmm. um, but the, like, we swear by the L series and it doesn't give me any by. of the like purple lines or like no. green or anything like that. And I see that in some like raw photos, straight out of the camera photos from other photographers and obviously they fix it, but like it just takes a little bit longer in post when you're editing to kind of like go through and make sure it's not there. But there's also the little optics thing that just like mm -hmm. gets rid of it too. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, you can get rid of it. It's just, it's an extra step added on. We should be L series sales reps. We really should, they should sponsor us. I'm like, hey Canon, Canon sponsor us. All I'm saying is your sales are gonna go up. And Do you edit raws from clients for a price? Both of us, we don't like, send out raws ever. I know some photographers will like take the photos and then their session fee is just like for the photo shoot. We don't do that. We do like your session fee includes the photo shoot itself and then us editing and sending off your photos. Um, so it's not an added on price, but I know some photographers that do do that. And it's just personal preference, I guess. I think that's all the question. We did it. We can read. <laughs> I know, literally. Talk like and here. subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Those are all the questions that we're going to answer. Um, those were a lot of good questions. So if we do this in the future and you have any other questions, I will put it in my Instagram story or whatever. I'm going to tag you in the, what's the word? Description box. So follow her, follow me. We're both photographers in the Arizona area. We also travel, so. Sometimes together. <laughs> yeah, if you're in Mexico or something and you want us to come to your wedding and shoot it, then we'll be there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Love you. See you soon. See you in our next video. Maybe Katie will come to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.